Okay, never mind. I will uh, talk about the speciality. Uh, can everybody hear me? Yes, we can. We are here. Can yes. Now, I am Dr. R. P. Dayasen. I am probably the most senior ENT surgeon in government service at the moment. Uh, I will tell you some important uh, things for you to decide for your career. The ENT has been actually a, a separate specialty of the surgical uh, specialties from the beginning of the Postgraduate Institute in 1980. The ENT has a separate board of study, so we conduct our own training program. And uh, if you are interested in surgery or if you like surgery, ENT is certainly one of the specialties you can think of uh, because we like to get uh, people who are surgically interested and surgically skilled uh, who can do good surgery um, for ENT specialty or otorhinolaryngology. And we call ourselves otorhinolaryngologist and head and neck surgeon. So it is not only that you look after the uh, holes of the nose, ear, and mouth. Uh, you, there is a variety of surgeries you can do in the head and neck, and most of our ENT surgeons uh, around the country are performing these uh, major uh, surgeries of the head and neck. So if anybody wants to join the specialty, I would think that uh, they will have to pass the general surgical MS examination, the screening examination, which is conducted by the Board of Study General Surgery. So throughout in our history in the PGIM, we have been selecting candidates who have got through the general MS surgery part one. So they are like, uh, have the, they have the potential of becoming any surgeon. Uh, so you can become neurosurgeon, orthopedic surgeon, general surgeon, or any other surgeon. But uh, the important thing is in ENT, uh, you deviate from your part one qualification. So once you get your part one surgery, uh, if you want to do ENT, you can give a letter to the PGIM and say that you would like to follow the ENT training program. So then we will enroll you in our training program. And our training program uh, generally runs about six years after qualifying your part one. So that is from the time of your entry to the training. If you proceed well, you will go six years. And after six years, if you are satisfactory with your progress, you will be both certified as an ENT surgeon. So we have first two years of uh, registrar ENT uh, appointments, which are conducted in the training units where you will be given a lot of uh, knowledge about uh, ENT and also the surgical training. And after that two years of ENT, you have to do six months or maybe in between you can do uh, six months of general surgery is also in our training program. So we have got ENT two years, six months general surgery. And then we have got four months of oncosurgery, which is usually done in a cancer surgical center, uh, commonly done at Maharagama, four months of oncosurgery, and then two months of neurosurgery. So as a registrar, you have to do this uh, three years of training program. And then after that, you will be sitting your part two examination. The part two examination is conducted by the ENT board of study, but we have a component in general surgery, actually two components in general surgery. We have got general surgical principles paper for three hours and general surgical viva. So the rest of the exam is ENT. So ENT plus general surgery components will uh, constitute the MD in auto rhinolaryngology. Of course, you have to do a case book also, 10 cases you have to do. And uh, after getting through your part two, you will be working as a senior registrar in auto rhinolaryngology. The local training period is uh, two years as a senior registrar in a recognized training unit. And the foreign training, the mandatory period of training for ENT foreign training is one year, but generally the health department will give you an additional year or two years leave. So if you can secure a registrar placement or some work in, in a foreign country for your training, you can even spend two years 
um, abroad, but mandatory period of training is one year with satisfactory progress reports. And after that, you will be returning and you have to conduct a research project also in your training, which has to be submitted uh, before your board certification. And then we will conduct the pre board certification assessment. And if you are suitable and if you have gone through all the uh, facets of training satisfactorily, you will be board certified as an ENT surgeon. So ENT and head and neck is a uh, field which has again got many different different operations. Uh, microsurgery is something that we do using microscope. Mostly the uh, ear surgery is microsurgery. Uh, and if you are very skilled with microscopic instruments and fine work, you can do microsurgery. And uh, then of course the nasal cavity and the sinuses uh, the endoscopic surgery is one of the important areas of ENT and a lot of surgeons do endoscopic sinus surgery and they are very skilled and we have equipment for this in this country, most of the stations. And then uh, throat and mouth and the head and neck area, salivary glands and so many things you can do in ENT. If you consider the subspecialties, at the moment, uh, Sri Lanka, we have not recognized uh, subspecialties to board certify in those subspecialties, but there are some areas recognized. Now, pediatric ENT is one of the specialties some of our colleagues have opted for, but they are uh, both as general ENT surgeons. But if you are interested in that field, you can go to a pediatric ENT unit and spend the rest of your career there. And uh, also, you can have your own interest, subspecialty interest. Uh, the interest that you can have, many people have endoscopic surgery as an interest, and then some people have uh, skull-based surgery. Skull-based surgery is a lot to do with the neurosurgeons and the other surgical teams. And uh, then of course, sleep surgery and variety of different, different types of surgery you can do as an ENT surgeon. Uh, when it comes to the work environment, generally, the ENT wards are not very busy because we manage most of our patients as outpatients and therefore the admissions are only when it is absolutely necessary so that we don't have very busy wards or crowded wards. The wards are generally clean. We can keep them in a reasonable way by doing regular ward rounds so we don't have large numbers of patients getting admitted. Then the on-calls also, you don't get a lot of disturbances like other specialties. Uh, relatively less disturbances. So if you do your usual working hours, uh, most of the time you don't have to come after hours, but very rarely you may be called to come and see a patient after hours. When it comes to the private practice, it has a fairly good outpatient uh, workload. So as I said, most of the patients are outpatient. So you can have a lot of private patients if you want to see private patients in the outside. And also there are opportunities to do private surgeries in most of the private hospitals. So I would say it is a very good uh, specialty to follow if you like to have a little leisure time or if you don't want to be in the hospital most of the time. I think ENT is a very good specialty and, and I have been in this uh, specialty for the last 30 years and I have enjoyed my work and I have trained a lot of people. So I think it's a good specialty if anybody is surgically interested. Thank you.